When you think of the Axis powers, what countries do you think of? Most likely, you think of Germany, Italy, and Japan. But there are many more Axis members and allies that are rarely mentioned. Today, I will mention them. <laughs> If you like learning geography facts, then you may know that Czechia is the youngest country in Europe. This is because any countries in its place either did not count, like Czechoslovakia and the medieval Bohemian kingdoms, or were occupying empires that did not share the Czech nationality. But you may wonder why Slovakia is considered much older. Af older. After all, Czechia and Slovakia separate on the same day. Well, the Slovak state is why. There is a region in modern-day Czechia known as the Sudetenland. The Sudetenland was mainly inhabited by Germans. In 1938, Nazi German leader Adolf Hitler claimed the Sudetenland as German territory and threatened to invade Czechoslovakia if they did not give it up. Britain and France negotiated the Sudetenland surrender in the hopes that Hitler would not invade the rest of Czechoslovakia. Hitler, being Hitler, would invade the rest of Czechoslovakia on March 15th of 1939. One day before, on March 14th, Slovakia declared independence with Germany's support. The Czech part of Czechoslovakia was fully occupied by Germany, but Slovakia was just a puppet state with some level of autonomy. This puppet state was known as the Slovak state. Hitler selected Catholic priest and former Slovak regional prime minister Joseph Tizo as Slovakia's reader. The First Vienna Award, signed before the German invasion, would give parts of southern Slovakia to Hungary. Some parts of the Slovak state are now part of Poland. After independence, Slovakia would briefly own the region of Kapartho, Ukraine, now part of modern-day Ukraine. Hungary occupied Kapartho, Ukraine, and briefly went to war with Slovakia on March 23rd, and Slovakia quickly surrendered the region. Being on the Polish border, Slovakia would be the only Axis member other than Germany to participate in the invasion of Poland. They fought some small battles in southern Poland alongside the Germans, but nothing worth mentioning. Slovakia would send a force of 45,000 soldiers to help out during the Axis invasion of the Soviet Union. The Soviets would eventually begin to push back the Axis forces, and the Slovak troops would be weakened and eventually disbanded because of low morale. In 1944, Slovaks would start an uprising against Tito, but it would be put down by German soldiers. The Soviets would reach Slovakia, and it would be grouped back into a communist Czechoslovakia. <laughs> know that the Treaty of Versailles was bad for post-World War I Germany, but the Treaty of Saint-Germain-en-Laye was terrible for the former Austro-Hungarian Empire. Austria turned from one of the largest empires in Europe into a Central European minor nation which was mostly made of mountains as well as the large city of Vienna. The Austro-Hungarian territory in the Balkans was given to Yugoslavia. The place that worst of all was Hungary. Hungary was briefly ruled by a democratic government before being taken over by the Hungarian Soviet Republic. The Hungarian Soviet Republic would request any dissent in a period known as the Red Terror in 1919, in which Hungary would also go to war with Romania over the region of Transylvania, which was also part of Austria-Hungary but given to Romania. Hungary and Romania would end hostilities with the Treaty of Trianon in 1920, and shortly after, right-wing leaders in the country would form a government and re-establish the monarchy. The former King of Hungary, Charles IV, was a Habsburg and was also the King of Austria. Austria had a personal union with Hungary, which formed Austria-Hungary. Hungary knew that if they tried to make Charles king, then Britain and France would intervene. As a result, Mikolas Horthy, an admiral in the Austro-Hungarian navy, was made regent. In 1921, Charles came to Hungary and attempted to gather an army to storm the capital of Budapest. He was arrested and exiled, and the Hungarian parliament passed a law officially dethroning Charles and any other Habsburg. Having no replacement for for the king, Horthy remained as regent. The Treaty of Trinon, as previously mentioned, gave Transylvania to Romania, but it also has portions of northern Hungary to Czechoslovakia and parts of southern Hungary were given to Yugoslavia. Over the years, Hungary's government became more and more nationalistic and leaders began to want to undo the Treaty of Trinon. In 1927, fascist dictator Vitaly Benito Mussolini signed the Treaty of Friendship with Hungary. 
Hungary would draw closer to both Italy and Germany, and in 1938, the first Vienna Award would give back some Hungarian territories to, to Czechoslovakia, back to Hungary. Hungary would occupy and would later be given the region of Kapartho, Ukraine. Tensions would grow between Hungary and, other, and another Axis ally, Romania, over Transylvania. The Second Vienna Award would give a large portion of Transylvania to Hungary in exchange for cooperation with Romania. In 1941, Germany invaded Yugoslavia, and Hungary let the let Wehrmacht troops into their territory on the way to the front lines. Yugoslavia surrendered, and Hungary took back parts that were given to Yugoslavia. Hungary would declare war on the Soviet Union in 1941, just after Germany did. The Hungarian Second Army was sent in, and would eventually be involved in the famous Battle of Stalingrad. The entire army would lose the battle. The Soviets began to push back Axis forces, and by 1944, they were close to reaching Hungary. Hungary was caught secretly contacting the Allied powers to negotiate a peace deal. As a result, Germany invaded Hungary in Operation Margarethe. Important areas were occupied, and Horthy was placed under house arrest, but still officially remained as regent. The Hungarian government again attempted to negotiate peace, and thus Germany launched Operation Panzerfust. Horthy lost all power as regent, and Ferenc Szilazy, a German supporter, was made the head of state. The Soviets would reach Hungary and occupy the whole country. In 1946, the monarchy would be officially dissolved, and the Second Hungarian Soviet Republic would be put in place. <laughs> Romania gained independence from the Ottoman Empire after the Crimean War. Romania would declare war on the Central Powers in 1916. They launched an offensive into Transylvania, which was owned by enemy Austria-Hungary at the time. After Russia left the war after the Russian Revolution, Romania was surrounded by enemies and was forced to surrender. The Romanian government would, would be rehabilitated after the offensive of Thessaloniki, which forced nearby Bulgaria, a Central Powers member, to surrender. The region of Bessarabia, now part of modern-day Moldova and Ukraine, was given to Romania, and a few months later, Transylvania would be officially given to Romania in the Treaty of saint germain en laye Hungary would go to war with Romania in 1919 over Transylvania. Hungary would eventually surrender their claims over Transylvania. Romania now controlled all the territories known as Greater Romania. Romania would grow ever so slowly toward fascism fascist dictatorship, with their king, Carol II, at the time, having absolute power to do things like dissolve parliament. Nationalist parties like the National Christian Defense League and the Iron Guard gained prominence. In 1937, the king appointed nationalist leader Octavian Goga as prime minister. Shortly after, Hitler would meet with Carol II. Hitler wanted the government to be led by one of the other fascist parties, the Iron Guard. This was because the Iron Guard was more friendly to Nazi influence. Carol dismissed Goga as well as the rest of the government. A new constitution was created, which gave the king power to not only choose the prime minister, but all of the government ministers. Carol would not listen to Hitler's demands and would have the Iron Guard leaders arrested and later killed. Carol would appoint Iron Guard opponent Armand Cal Calonescu as prime minister. Calonescu would be assassinated by Iron Guard supporters on September 21st, shortly after the German invasion of Poland. Carol still tried to maintain neutrality. In 1940, the Soviet Union would send an ultimatum to Romania demanding Bessarabia. Romania would agree and ceded the area. Shortly after, Romania would cede northern Transylvania to Hungary and southern Dobruja to Bulgaria, another Axis ally. Many Romanians would become angry with such a big loss of territory and would begin to support fascist parties. The Iron Guard and General Ion Antonescu would force Carol II to abdicate in favor of his 19-year-old heir, Prince Michael I. Antonescu would form the Nationalist Legionary State and would make himself Prime Minister. The Iron Guard was the only legal party. On November 23rd, Romania would join the Axis powers. Antonescu began to lose approval from the other Iron Guard leaders who attempted a coup on the 20th of January 1941. The coup would fail and the Iron Guard was disbanded. Antonescu would abolish the National Legionary State in favor of the National and Social State and made himself di a dictator. Romania would partake in the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union and Romanian armies would, would retake Bessarabia as well as conquer areas in southern Ukraine like Odessa and Crimea. Romanian armies would be involved in the Battle of Stalingrad and would eventually be pushed back by the Soviets. Romania's factories and infrastructure would be destroyed or, and or severely damaged by Soviet air raids.
Romania sent products to Germany to help with the war effort, but by 1944, Germany had stopped paying. These, along with other factors, would lead to Romania's economy crashing and hyperinflation becoming rampant. The Soviets began to push into Romania, and eventually the whole country was under Soviet occupation. Best Arabia was given back to the Soviets, and Romania became a Soviet puppet. And that's where we'll leave it for now. The rest of the countries will be in part two.